like there's just been a decline in the population. Um, like there's just not enough just as there used to be. Yes, it would be chemicals like fertilizers and pesticides. Environmental effects, whether it's global warming or pesticides. Like building homes on their in their environment. GMOs and stuff like that and it's affecting bees. The stuff like in the soil, cities and people. I don't know much. A lot of people don't realize that without the honeybees there pollinating for our food supply, uh, we would not last as a civilization for more than five years. This is a hive that I, uh, we rescued, we relocated, and we maintain for a resident here who uh, benefits from the honey, having her garden pollinated, and then uh, we just come through and keep the, the bees happy and healthy. So today was uh, what I would call regular hive maintenance, uh, going by a hive that I maintain for a resident. Um, checking over to see kind of how the hive's looking, how the health is, see if we need to add any boxes, uh, make sure that the queen's laying. So this is a small part of what I do. Um, the majority of my work is in the field doing removals. So I'm doing swarm and hive removals um, all day long all over the county. Bees are extremely important. We rely on them more than we realize for all of our food, for pollination, and um, for honey and for our diet. We have a uh, growing population and everyone's relying on this food that is really a surplus of food that is there because of the bees. We like to spread the beekeeping knowledge, get more people into it. The more people are into it, the more their friends get into it and questions and the awareness spreads and uh, in turn you get more pollinators in more areas that we're seeing less bees in. I study honeybee health as well as uh, some native species health. I focus on environmental stressors that honeybees can be exposed to. The most important aspect of honeybees for humans is that they pollinate and that's extremely important because they pollinate wild plants which uh, and that guarantees the reproduction of these plants increasing the biodiversity in the environment and therefore the biodiversity of the animals present in the environment uh, they also uh, pollination is also essential for the production of fruits and vegetables concerning honeybee health usually bees uh, are exposed to many environmental stressors uh, which are, uh, for example, diseases, uh, nutritional deficits, uh, habitat loss, uh, pesticides, for example, and all of these factors likely contribute to the phenomenon of, uh, the, hon of the honeybee decline. It's multiple reasons what is causing the honeybee collapse. Number one threat is chemicals. Number two is commercial beekeeping practices, which is a necessary evil. Number three is monocrops. What is causing colony collapse disorder is that combination. The reality of it is poisons they're selling in your average hardware store is killing the bees. In the old days, you would spray something on the outside that would kill any bugs that come near the leaf. People want to just pour a bottle of something on something and not have to do it for a year. They sell it by gallons at Home Depot. It's sucked up by the plant. Every leaf, every insect that either feeds off the nectar pollen or leaf ends up dying. The biggest issue uh, facing the bees right now is called the CCD, or Colony Collapse Disorder. Um, this is an issue where beehives are missing. The queen is there, but the worker bees don't come back to the hive. It, it doesn't match any of the known uh, diseases and pests that, have, that normally kill our beehives, like American foul brood and varroa mites and all these other destructors. Um, it's unknown exactly what's causing this, and that's what's causing most fear and panic with people trying to figure this out. And with this colony collapse disorder and the issue that we're facing uh, losing bees, um, it's an issue that a lot of people think is just like another bug going extinct, that it's not such a big deal. Uh, we don't have the means to support uh, our population with enough food without these pollinators. They, um, they triple our harvests when they pollinate, and without their pollinating, then we get the normal harvest, and it's not nearly enough for our growing population to survive. So honeybees are detrimental to human uh, civilization survival. When the farmers are you know, producing less fruit, then we're paying more to get that fruit. And that's the first effect we're going to see. Before food shortages, the prices are going to rise um, to pretty extreme heights. Colony numbers have dropped, 
so there's not as many bees available for pollination. It's extremely hard on the beekeeping community. If the beekeepers come out to work the hives, there'd be no bees in a hive whatsoever. I think the biggest culprit is, is called a varroa mite. It's uh, related to fleas. It's a parasite. They can have a virus associated with the mite. It can get injected into the bee and then later on a virus takes off into the colony and, and it can kill it. The mites themselves can overpopulate they can get such a large population in a short period of time. The nests, the bees don't survive and they, they collapse. Typically, the varroa mite, which is a uh, cause of a disease of the honeybee, is the major problem for honeybees. Bees find it more difficult to survive in the environment in recent years uh, because of the increased impact of humans and on, the, on the environment. Beekeeping is um, very important. Uh, for maintaining uh, the current levels of uh, bee populations. In fact, beekeepers help uh, reproduce honeybee colonies and when there is a decline, when they have a loss of honeybees, uh, they can uh, produce other bee colonies from one. So live removal is um, a better option over an extermination for a beehive for a couple of reasons. You're helping the in the long run with the ecosystem, keeping the pollinators healthy, population of native uh, honeybees, and uh, you're also just putting out less of the insecticide and poisons into the ground because it's uh, you don't exactly know who all is going to end up getting contaminated by that. So what the day-to-day -day people who aren't involved in beekeeping themselves can do to help bees is. Uh, Making an effort to shop for uh, fruits and vegetables that are non-GMO and organic. Um, planting wild flowers, um, not using products like Roundup. Being informed about what insecticides are dangerous and which ones are less. Using um, more natural uh, insecticides for their own gardens and, and yards. And uh, informing their neighbors of what types of insecticides are uh, harming the environment and the bees and stuff if you know of a, a neighbor that's spraying. We'll make sure that what you, whatever pesticides you might be using in your own home are not harmful to bees. Well, I think it's always positive to use less toxic chemicals. Compost, you know, composting and using like fresh fertilizer. Maybe choose not to buy produce and things like that that are grown using pesticides.